Hello, I'm John Grom, and welcome to our 220th Right and Left Discussion Forum. We hold our televised discussions twice monthly to demonstrate the value of civil, productive, open-minded, non-argumentative sharing of ideas. Today, our panel will discuss public school parents' rights to participate in their children's public school experience. Today's panel begins with, uh, well, Tom Finley, if he'll join us in a few minutes, hopefully. And Patty Haskins, former member of the Wadsworth City Council and faculty of Wadsworth Senior High School. Brian Lava, president of R&B Financial Services. And Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired senior research chemist. Ron, in your experience, in uh, you, you I, th I believe you did go to public schools. Um, and uh, what are your thoughts on a parent's role in establishing the public school experience? Don, I, it's an interesting question. I, I recall growing up, I went to parochial school for eight years, so parents had little or no say there. <laughs> you know, whatever the whatever. Uh, whatever the priest and the mother superior said kind of went. And I don't think anybody really questioned it very much. Uh, high school uh, wasn't a problem. My parents uh, took an interest in what I was doing, but I was a good student, so they didn't have any cause to complain, I don't think. Uh, when my children were young, my wife was a school teacher. She was in the school system in Wadsworth, so we were pretty aware of what was going on. So it's more of a recent thing, I believe. Uh, there, you, you referenced uh, a, a House of Representatives bill, H.R. 5, which, uh, which related to this question. And there are a number of uh, setting up a patient's bill of rights there with the ability to meet with the school board, the ability to meet with their, their students. Uh, you know, also looking at the text of that bill, there were also a number of cultural war issues here about, about gender, gender rights for children and how that should be played out in the public schools. I think I think it's one of those slippery slopes. I think uh, educators are educated. They're in the business of doing this. They are studied this. They are, they are the experts in the field. Uh, I think parents have a right to investigate the curriculum. I think a parent has a right to uh, ask if, if they look at a particular book that's being studied in the upper grades or the lower grades, particularly in the lower grades, to say, no, I don't agree with that. I don't want my child to be exposed to that. That's fine. I think they have the right to do that. That parent doesn't have the right to tell my child what to read. But, uh, you know, that's that's part of the slippery part of the slope there. Uh, now parents are petitioning, well, now, not just now. This is a long-term long problem thing with uh, getting books banned and setting school policy to favor their particular political point of view or their particular rights of their child and uh, possibly infringing on the rights of others. And, and uh, I think you got to be very careful about that. And, and uh, so to codify this uh, seems to me it possibly be an overkill here. I think uh, you need good faith uh, relationships between parents and the school system. And uh, to put it into a legal, legal format is... Uh, uh, kind of makes that difficult, I believe, and uh, I would rather not see that happen. Uh, certainly, uh, parents have always been able to address a, a, a school board meeting uh, in most most places. If not, then uh, you know you got res most school boards are elected, so you have that option later on uh, to take care of that. Uh, should you be able to preview preview the curriculum of the child's school? Huh, that's a good question. I, 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 I have my doubts about that and whether that should be allowed. Uh, you, and, just, you mean you have your doubts about a parent's right to even look at uh, it? Being able to being able to review it. Uh, 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 it would seem like you should be able to do that. I suppose. Again, again. I want to defer to the, I want to defer to the school, to the, to the school administration, to the teachers, to the librarians. They know what they're doing. Hmm. I think they know what they're doing. Okay. Pat, uh, Patty, as a uh, classroom uh, teacher, um, how do you feel about what uh, Ron just said? Uh, 
that uh, he doesn't think the parents should have the right to review the curriculum. Well, I think parents absolutely have a right to review curriculum. Um, and, you know, for that reason, most teachers now are required to publish uh, courses. You know, you have a course of study, which a lot of which is dictated by the state standards committees that are set up and committees work on these. Uh, that information is widely available already to the parents uh, if they want to see it. And if there is something that parents find that is uh, against their religion or against their views or they do not want their child taught, they do have the right, of course, to have their child not receive that information. However, that may, um, may end up affecting their grade negatively if they do not do a certain part, part of the curriculum. I think what you know, Ron is saying is that these curriculums and courses of study are set up by experts, people that have studied it, and know what should be part of the curriculum. Now, what you hope is that curriculum is presented in a way that is not culturally biased, that is not leaning one way or the other, but you know, it's basically just stick to the facts and present them and allows the child then to make up their own mind and think and make make decisions. And this was not as big a problem for me as it is in other disciplines because I was teaching math and pretty much math is kind of set the way it is. Um, you know, for now I, I would have objected had a parent come in and say, well, you know, this is just too hard for my kids, so they shouldn't have to study this. Dumb it or, down. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to dumb it down or that uh, – you know, they're never going to need this. Well, a lot of times there were things that we taught in math that you may not need it now, but there are applications for it in the future that, that need to be brought in. Um, you know, as far as, as the House Bill 5 was concerned, though, um, it requires a lot of different things, which I, I almost think it's redundant that we don't need this bill. I mean, it requires that... Um, to, parents be allowed to meet with teachers or meet with teachers. That's already required by the state. And there are days given for conferences. You'd be surprised how many, however, how many parents don't bother to show up for a conference day. Um, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be at all surprised. You know, on the secondary level, we would have a conference evening and I would have anywhere from 100 to 140 kids a year. And I might end up meeting with five parents because really? that's all that would come in that we're interested in, in coming in and seeing how their kid was doing. So, you know, that's not something they need to codify because it's already taking place. Uh, having the ability to speak to school boards is already allowed for. I don't know of a school board anywhere that doesn't allow students or parents to speak. Now, what they don't allow is for a parent to stand up and threaten board members or to create a violent situation. I, I think there was a lot of misunderstanding when uh, the government was stepping in to try to prevent violence against school board members. And it was because people were threatening them. They were greeting them at their cars, pounding on their cars. They, uh, members of school boards had to be escorted out by police so that they weren't injured, you know, that definitely should not be allowed. As far as speaking at school boards, that's always been allowed, and I don't think we need to codify that. As far as selecting textbooks, I wholeheartedly agree with what Ron said. If someone finds that a particular book that is in the library is offensive to them for whatever reason, then their child shouldn't have to read it. Uh, in many cases, when there are required reading lists for various English classes or social studies classes, there's always an alternative that can be chosen so that the child does not have to read it. But please do not come in then and say that because you disagree with something, that my child cannot read that particular book because that becomes censorship. Yeah. Um, you know, when I look at some of the books that have been banned, you know, like To Kill a Mockingbird. Just recently there in Florida, now they reinstated it, but there was a book on Roberto Clemente that they said had to be pulled off the shelves 
because it presented uh, ideas about segregation and it would make white children feel bad about themselves. There was one about uh, Wilma Rudolph, the Olympic uh, basketball star. No, track star, wasn't she? Yeah. Drag star, yes, I'm sorry. I said yeah. the wrong thing. Um, I remember when she ran. But uh, there are instances in the book about where she was discriminated against and it was pulled off the shelves because it was going to make some white child feel badly about their uh, situation. Now, fortunately, those books have been placed back on the shelf. The interesting thing on that ban is that there's now a group of Democratic lawmakers that are moving to have Ron DeSantis' book, and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, uh, removed from the shelves in all schools in Florida. And they filed for this because uh, they say it triggers, you know, we're getting to, my point being, we're getting into the ridiculous zone with some of this. Yeah. yeah. And we need to go back and use some common sense. Yeah. Brian, what Brian? What are your thoughts? You've got a big smile on your face. I think I know why. <laughs> I yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Trust me, I'm. I'm not laughing at Patty or anybody. But no, I'm I obviously struggling with this camera. Um, yeah, <laughs> this should be an outtake. Tom, um, excuse, excuse me, just a minute, Brian. Tom, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay. Um, well, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna uh, turn to you in a couple of minutes, but we're gonna. You're, you're 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 fine. Look at the camera when you talk. Uh, yeah. But no, yeah. you're, you're, I'm you're, having but, trouble with the volume. It's going and coming. So I don't know what it did to my new computer. But. Well, okay. Tom got hit by lightning last night. The oh, got, oh, I'm sorry to well, hear that. He needs to be hit again just to get straightened out. I think. <laughs> but anyway, that. <laughs> um, you know, I think that we just need to step back and see actually what's happening. This is sort of a red meat issue for certain groups. Yeah. And they basically yeah. throw all the schools into one big bucket. You know, they talk about uh, critical race theory, all the things that comes seems to come up. It hits some hot buttons with people. Um, and for me uh, and my experience, with Wadsworth City Schools is that we've never had an issue with meeting with teachers, going to a school board meeting if we had anything. Um, the teachers were always, I mean, there was a handout. I, I remember distinctly when our kids, I think it was sixth, sixth or seventh grade, they watched the movie, the Tom Hanks movie. Um, oh, was it a big? Philadelphia. Big. You know, where, where oh, actually he's, he's a little boy and he, oh, big. Big, he gets yeah. turned into an, a man. And yeah. they sent home, the teacher great sent piano home. Scene. What's that? He had that great piano scene where he was dancing. Yes, piano. yes, yeah. yes. Well, they sent home a, a little letter that said, we're, we're going to be watching the movie Big in class on Friday. If you have any reservations from this, please send this back and we'll have your student. Um, you know, go to a, a study hall or something like that. It was completely yeah. open. It was transparent. There wasn't anything nefarious about it. And we we watched the movie. You know, it, it really didn't, for us, us personally, it didn't rise to any sort of overt sexually stuff or there might have been one word in there. We didn't think it was going to be damaging to our, our, our sixth grader or maybe, maybe they were in seventh grade. I, I can't remember. It was a while ago. But I've always I had this good experience with our school system. I, and, and now, obviously, there must be some schools out there because you always see those videos pop up where the parent goes to the school and they're not listening to people. Yeah. Uh, the school board is not being responsive to the people. But in, in our situation, the experience that I've had with our school system, we've always had very... Um, a good uh, response from the teachers. We've always gone to their the parent nights. Um, I don't know why you have to legislate that. I mean, I think I, I mean, Patty can can tell us all how many how many parent nights they have during the year. And and if your kid's failing, trust me, they notify you. You know, um, you know, 
you, you have those, there's a lot of communication. I'm not sure we need a law about it, but it, 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 it's the red meat issue that gets people all worked up that we need now a law that says the parents have rights. Um, if, uh, if, you know, if the books that our kids are reading in school, uh, if the parent is actually engaged in their child's education, they'll know this will be no surprise to anybody. That's what kind of, you know, sets me back a little bit is why are you surprised that your kid is reading To Kill a Mockingbird when they send out a syllabus at the beginning of the year as to all the stuff materials they're going to cover? I mean, yeah, but it are has you, to be, the syllabus has to be read. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, are you not taking that stuff out of your kid's book bag? Are you not talking to your kid about school? I mean, this is more to me, a, more of an indictment of the parent mm -hmm. that there needs to be a law that says, wake up, you know, your kid's actually being educated. They're reading a book. You know, I think everybody should read a killing a, to kill a mockingbird once a year <laughs> to, to have to have some sense of what's going on sometimes. Yeah. So I, I just I really struggle with this overreach yeah. on both sides. You know, I, I mean book banning and all that kind of stuff it, I, I, it just it just falls flat with me when yeah. it comes to these issues because i have not had that experience um i have not uh, we've been engaged in our children's education um we found responsive teachers responsive administrators we might not have agreed with them all the time but they were at least responsive yeah. and so yeah i i just i really struggle when we somehow try to codify you know, what school boards have to do, uh, how they have to do it, you know, get involved with your kids and you'll find that there are very few surprises when it comes to their education. Yeah. Well, we've heard from uh, three people now about the Wadsworth school system. Uh, I had a discussion with an Akron school teacher and, and uh, we discussed the seven things that are listed in House Bill 5. And he told me all those things are in effect in the Akron school system as well. Uh, and it, it seems to me like these are politicians that just want to be able to uh, get some uh, quotes on the campaign trail uh, to say, I'm in favor of this, this, and this. There are seven things that are already in effect. Uh, John, Tom, John, I think that's absolutely true. I read through uh, a number of the, uh, the pages in that, uh, on, on, the, uh, on the website about that and uh, which was transcriptions from the congressional record of the of the floor debates and it was all oh, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle one to my colleagues you know it was just yeah. all just it's all political all right. right tom it's uh, i'm glad you were able to join us even though you got hit by a lot can you hear me tom I can hear you oh, okay. uh, my volume was obviously bothered because i've not been able to raise it but at any rate i can hear Okay, well, I can see. Okay, okay, well, okay. Uh, but, now I'd like your, your perspective as a former uh, classroom teacher and a, a, a middle school uh, principal. Um, wh what are your thoughts on parents' rights in the uh, public uh, schools? Uh, I think those uh, have existed since uh, I spent the 20 years. Uh, there was never a blockage, a, a, a discouragement in the schools I was in as a teacher and certainly as a principal, it, it was it was an encouragement of dialogue between parent, teacher, administrator, the schools. That, that was never an issue uh, in the times I was there. Uh, I began, uh, and this is in the late 50s, early 60s, and in an industrial city in Arbiton, Ohio. And the citizens there via the school board uh, had taken a leadership role in whatever. Uh, overcrowded classrooms was a problem. They solved it by, there was room in the UL Light Junior High School. Uh, the parents there agreed and were involved in the decision to move those fifth and sixth graders to UL Light. Uh, and it was successful, the integration of that 
Oh, there were bumps, but uh, the involvement of parents was there. I can remember it distinctly. I had the, and we had the special ed classes, as they were called, the slow learning classes. And they were placed there. With a, and I happened to teach one of the sixth grade, or we called it retarded at that point, uh, classes. And then Barberton, an industrial city, whatever, I took the leadership role and created uh, gifted classes for Evanston, fifth and sixth. I had the, an opportunity to teach those classes. And they're sitting across from us today as Patty. She's one of my fifth grade students. Uh, evidence of why communities need to be in charge of their school. The parents need to be in charge of their school, not the state or federal governments. That would be a backward move. Okay, well, that leads me into a question about the uh, United States Department of Education. It actually started in 1867, but uh, died off into a Department of uh, Education rather than a, a, a cabinet level position. But in 1979, under Jimmy Carter, we uh, established the uh, the, the, uh, the I, is it called the Department? What uh, anyway? They, they, we had the Education Bill, and now we've got a Department of Education. But and billions and billions. In fact, the current budget uh, for the Department of Education is seventy billion a year, and the uh, president wants to raise it to a hundred. Uh, there are forty-one hundred employees, and he wants to raise that to mo over five thousand. When you look at the test scores or the uh, public school report card, starting in nineteen seventy-nine, it has only inched up a tiny bit, and we have spent hundreds of billions of dollars uh, and uh, it, it, with a little to no results. So the question I have is, should the federal government be getting even more involved in uh, uh, the public educational process? This House bill seems to me to be nothing more uh, than a, uh, a way to uh, uh, promote politicians' electability. <laughs> Any thoughts? Yes. I was, I was <laughs> talk, if I might share it, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, the, the danger of our federal government and our state government attaching uh, to any funding, which is where they belong, is as funds, uh, and that's the only place, not in the establishment of curriculum or learning or qualifications of teachers, et cetera, et cetera. That belongs to the parents, not to the state, not to the federal government. There's real danger there of apathy occurring among the parents because they don't have power and the government setting things in place that lead to things like Ukraine and, and uh, Russia where uh, democracy is in danger, if you will, in China, for heaven's sakes. So yeah. we don't want to go that way. Ron, you were about ready to comment on something. I said, consider this for, for a moment. Uh, with funding comes, you know, there, there's an old expression, he who pays the piper calls the tune. <laughs> so uh, so uh, with the with governments getting into the funding uh, of, of uh communities of, of, of schools, which is, I think, is a good thing overall, because we don't really have the money to do that. Uh, they're going to want for they're going to want control. They're going to want control. Uh, the college I went to as an undergraduate for many, many years refused to apply for any sort of government grants. It was a private school, <clears throat> the government grants on that basis. They didn't want to be controlled by that. And I think that's a danger. I think that's a danger. You know, I, I think there are some good things, though, about that the government can do as far as, you know, setting like the federal government can set federal standards that would prevent a school district from, um, let's say, uh, uh, being trying to uh, do something that was in a segregation form or to uh, try to attack a certain group of people uh, to make sure that the ADA is uh is 
properly followed. And that comes on a federal level. Now, those, those particular incidents are, are few and, you know, far between. As, you know, Tom, you had mentioned uh, state standards. State standards set what qualifications teachers have in order to teach. And I, I think that there should be some guidance from the state along those lines. Uh, you don't want a community that just decides, well, we'll take Joe, Sue, and Jane that live down the block and let them be the teachers without any appropriate training or making sure of their skill level before teaching. Uh, we want our teachers to be well-educated. We want our teachers to be bright people that understand the subject matter and know how to convey it to students. And uh, I think where this comes to the state, when they set standards for that, now, do I think all of the standards are correct? No. And do I think that all of them need to be in place? No. But I think that there does need to be some guidance to make sure that the quality of education remains at a particular level. Okay. So, in your experience, Patty, do these uh, uh, limitations uh, or, excuse me, requirements for uh, uh, teachers' uh, educational standards apply to parochial schools as well? Uh, yes, they do. Well, they, they didn't used to. Now, I believe they do now. I do not know of a parochial school that would not hire someone that is certified. Um, or I should, I should say um, licensed now. When I was teaching, it was certification. Now it's licensure. Um, and knowing that, now I know like my daughter-in-law teaches at a uh, parochial school in Akron. Uh, she does have her master's, and I believe she is the only one with a master's on the staff. Hmm. Now, that is, it's going to be just the opposite yeah. if you go to a public school. Yeah, so. when I went to parochial school, we were taught by the Sisters of Charity of St. Augustine. And I yes. doubt, well, the Sisters of Charity was a misnomer in my experience. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, we had Dominicans yes. where, <laughs> where I went. But no, I, I think, you know, the standards are, are necessary to a certain point. And, Make sure that you do have quality. Um, it should, you know. Thank you very much, folks. Our, our time is up, and uh, we will meet in a uh, couple of weeks. See you. are watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.